All right, let's go ahead and go into the word on this morning. Uh, the word is coming from Matthew chapter 16 on this morning. Matthew chapter 16. And we're going to look at verses 21 through 24. Matthew 16, verses 21 through 24. Amen. Let's look at verse 21. It says, From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go into Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. But he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me. For thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Amen. If you're taking notes on today, I am coming from the topic, it's okay to follow Jesus. It's okay to follow Jesus. I kind of accidentally fell into this it's okay series. I started this series about three, four weeks ago when I started to talk about uh, it's okay to change your mind. Then the next week, I came with the topic of it's okay to laugh. Last week, we came from the topic it's okay to ask for help. And this Sunday is Resurrection Sunday, and I was Trying to think of a topic and something that uh, you could glean from today that you could apply to your lives. And what I came with today by the Holy Spirit is it's okay to follow Jesus. It is Resurrection Sunday. and You do know that it's okay to follow him. But let's go ahead. And let's let's look at the word on this morning. I hope that you can learn and glean from this from this word. Uh, this word this morning, it was prophesied in Daniel chapter 9, where Daniel talked about how these things would take place. You know, the Bible is so amazing. There are so many different prophecies in the word of God itself. And you may hear others talk about, well, the, the Bible was written by men and it's just a bunch of fables and a lot of stories that's not true. However, when you look at the word, and when you read the word, and even when you look at the Old Testament scripture, you will see prophecies that were prophesied, and they are fulfilled in the New Testament. This is one of them. Daniel chapter 9 talks about what is taking place here in Matthew chapter 16. And when you look at this, this text on this morning, Jesus He's talking to his disciples, his followers, and as he's talking to them, he's telling them how he must suffer as well as how he must die. Okay. In other words, he was letting them know that he's going to go through some things. He's going to suffer and he's going to die on the cross. And his disciples really didn't want to hear what he was saying, but Jesus had to have that tough discussion. You know, a lot of times we try to get away from having those tough discussions, but sometimes they need to be had. Sometimes you have to lay it all out there and tell others what's about to take place and what has already taken place. Jesus had to have the tough discussion with his followers, with his disciples to let them know that he would suffer and that he would die. As he was talking to his disciples, you know that that mouthy disciple, uh, 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 Pete Rock. Yeah, 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 Peter, the <laughs> disciple Peter. Peter, Peter spoke up. Peter's always speaking up for the other disciples. When 
The other disciples had something on their mind. They probably wouldn't speak, but Peter was the mouthpiece of the other disciples. He was the spokesman for the other disciples so that when Jesus was telling them how he must suffer and how he was going to die, Peter was like, well, no, Jesus, you don't have to go through any of that. We don't want you to suffer. We don't want you to die. We, well, we need you right here with us. You know, and, and Peter meant well. I mean, he, he didn't mean any harm by it. You know, a lot of people, they sometimes would give us advice and try to help us along the way. They, they don't mean any harm. They, they really mean well by what they're telling us. And the same thing with, with Peter here. He was like, no, Jesus, you do not have to go to the cross. <laughs> As he was telling Jesus this, uh, Jesus looked at Peter. He rebuked him. But it's interesting that when, when Jesus rebuked him, he called out Satan. He said, uh, I rebuke you, Satan. Now, Peter was talking, but Jesus recognized that although Peter meant well by his, his actions, uh, he was being used by Satan. Uh, Peter was a follower of Jesus, but yet he was being used by Satan. <laughs> There's a whole nother sermon right there. Let me just continue you on. That's, that's, that's a whole nother sermon. We, we can be followers of Christ, but yet sometimes we can fall into the trap yeah. Mm -hmm. of being used by Satan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You can mean well. You can, you can read your word 24-7, uh, 365, 366 in the leap year, but every once in a while we will fall into the trap of being used by Satan. Peter, he meant well. Mm -hmm. He was being used by Satan himself, Jesus was like, no, you don't, you don't realize what you're talking about. Jesus knew that what Peter was saying, it was, it was not of God. Mm -hmm. You see, Grace Center, God sees the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. Jesus knew that he had to go to the cross. Mm -hmm. That was the reason why he came in the first place, he he had to to come. He had to die. He had to suffer on that cross. And although Peter meant well, he loved Jesus. OK, he meant well, but he was being used by the enemy. But God knew what he was doing when he sent his son. God knew exactly what he had planned out for the entire world over 2,000 years ago when he sent Jesus. So God sees the bigger picture. You see, God is macro, okay? Uh, um, God is macro. We're micro. God sees the bigger picture. Uh, we look at things through binoculars. God looks at things through a telescope. He sees the bigger picture. So Jesus rebuked Peter for what he was saying. Just like us, close friends and family, and they love us, and they'll do anything for us. They'll take a bullet for us if they could. But we cannot always go with the advice that our closest friends and families would give to us. They love us. They mean well. They don't mean you any harm. But when God gives you the vision, mm -hmm. when God speaks to you, when God gives you the plan, when God gives you the blueprint, when you hear from God, you know how to carry out the assignment that he gave to you. Mm -hmm. They didn't hear the same thing that God told you. That's why sometimes you go and tell others about what God told you, they don't understand it. They scratch their heads trying to figure out how is it going to work. They don't understand all of the mechanics behind it. So as they're scratching their head, you already know that it's going to get worked out. Why? Because God told you that it's going to work out. Mm -hmm. Look at the story of Joseph with his brothers. Mm -hmm. God gave Joseph the dream. 
he gave Joseph the dream, and in this dream, it was about leaves falling down and bound to others and so forth. And, you know, Joseph, instead of keeping it to himself at that moment, he went and told his brothers, he went and told his father, Jacob, uh, his brothers were already jealous of him because his father, Jacob, gave him the coat of many colors. So his brothers were already jealous with him. Um, they end up throwing him into a pit and all of that and selling him into slavery, right? And then his brothers, they're his brothers, but yet they were jealous of him. But Joseph received the vision from God himself, right? Even when Joseph told his father, Jacob, Jacob himself did not understand the vision. That's his father. He loved his son. That's why he gave him the coat of many colors. He loved Joseph, right? And even when you read that story in Genesis 37, uh, it talks about that although Jacob did not quite understand what Joseph was telling him, he was like, you, you mean to tell me that I'm going to bow down to you? <laughs> Jacob didn't understand it. But when you read that story, it says that Jacob, he pondered on that. He kept it in mind. You know, he was thinking about that thing that Joseph told him. Others, they're not going to understand the vision and what God has given to you. That's what happened with Peter. He did not fully understand what Jesus had to do. But I'm so glad that Jesus did not listen to to Peter. Aren't you glad that Jesus did not listen to Peter? Uh, if Jesus would have listened to Peter, oh, we'll be in bad shape on today. We'll be in a world of hurt on today. If, if Jesus would have listened to Peter, watch this, we would still be in our sins. If, if, if Peter if Jesus would say, okay, Peter, maybe you're right. Maybe I don't have to suffer. It, it, it's going to hurt by them whooping me. Hmm. It's going to hurt by the nails going into me. Maybe I don't have to die on the cross. Maybe there's another way to do this thing. Maybe um, I can play a trick on the enemy. Maybe something can. Maybe you're right, Peter. Maybe I do not have to die. Maybe I can just hang out with you guys with our sandals. We can go to the local pub and all that. Maybe I can, Peter. But 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 I'm so glad he did not listen to Peter. If he would have listened to Peter, we would still be in our sins hmm. on today. But by Jesus. Obeying the Father. Yes. Doing exactly what God told him to do. Mm -hmm. When he died on the cross, it was a vicarious death. Mm -hmm. Meaning that he died so that we would have to. <laughs> he died in our place. It was a substitutionary death. You know, in other words, we did not have to go through it. Mm -hmm. He did it for us already. Vicarious, meaning a person will suffer for another in such a way that the other person does not need to suffer. Mm -hmm. Substitutionary atonement is what it was. Every lash he took, he took it for you. Every time he got spat on, he took it just for you. Every time they criticized him, he took it just for you. You didn't have to go through any of that. He went through all of the persecution, the hate, and the shame of the world was placed on him. He, he died in our place, so we didn't have to. So now we don't have to go and get animals and cut off the heads and lay on altars to shed the blood for the atonement. For our sins. Because the lamb. Was the ultimate sacrifice. Once the lamb was sacrificed. It was finished. It was done. No more sacrifice. Have to take place. Anymore. So Jesus took everything. For us. 
But I'm not done. I'm not done. I still got more to go in my little sermon. Watch this. Verse number 24. Let's look at it. It says, Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Let's become some spiritual surgeons on today. Let's dissect this verse. Let's look at the first part of that. Well, the second part. Let's look at where it says, if any man will come after me. All right. Any man, if, 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 if any man or woman is not gender specific, if, if, if any man will come after me. This reminds me when Jesus said, uh, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. When I read that, I, I thought about that verse. If, 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 if any man comes after me, uh, whosoever, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You see, uh, we don't have any excuses for not following Jesus. He says, if, 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 if any man, black, white, Asian. Hispanic, rich, middle class, poor, big, fat, skinny, tall, short. It doesn't matter. Big feet, small feet, big eyes, no eyes. It, it doesn't matter. He said, if any man will come after me, no matter who you are, if you come after me, I will take you in. Whosoever shall call, shall, shall, shall ask the Father, shall Ask the Father. I, I want to receive Jesus Christ into my heart, into my life. Whosoever that is, I will take you in. He made it clear that he does not discriminate. <laughs> yeah, there is no prejudice with God. I said this in one of my previous messages that God is not a racist. He He will take anyone in. He, God is not, you know, he's not looking at your, your bank account to determine if you have enough just to get in. You don't have to pay God. You cannot bribe God if, if, if any man will come after me. But then the text, it continues and it says, uh, uh, let him deny himself. All right. If any man will come after me and let him deny himself. In other words. Sometimes, Grace Center, you have to deny your flesh. Mm -hmm. There are things that sometimes we want to do. There are places sometimes we want to go. There are things that sometimes we want to say. But sometimes we have to deny ourselves and we have to, to follow Jesus. You know, there's a saying about where it says, let Jesus take the wheel. Mm -hmm. You see, when you deny yourself, you're letting Jesus take the wheel. In other words, you're letting Jesus become the pilot. Mm -hmm. All right. Jesus is not the co-pilot. He should be the pilot. He should be the one that's in the driver's seat taking you to where you need to get to. So you need to let Jesus Take the will and you need to deny yourself, deny your flesh and follow him. But the text also says, uh, take up his cross. OK, take up his cross. Now, with our westernized minds, as we read this, we have become accustomed to just reading the text so quickly and so fast without really and truly understanding what's taking place here in the text. Mm -hmm. You see, when Jesus spoke to his disciples, he was speaking to them in terms of how they could relate to how he was talking. Mm -hmm. For example, we all have different sides to us. In the boardroom, you can talk a certain lingo. They can get it. But around your homegirls and your homeboys, you have another lingo. Uh, you can talk to them and they'll get it. So you can you can talk to the CEO, the CFO, the CTO and all the other O's and they can understand the lingo of how you're talking in the boardroom. 
But when you lay back and you kick back with your Tims and your, your head on backwards and, and, and you just relax and you're just having a good time with your family and friends and, and so forth, you can be yourself and, 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 and have the lingo and talk to them and they understand everything that you're saying. You, you have different ways to talk to different segments of people. Now, hermeneutics, which is the interpretation of the text and the interpretation of the word of God, when you read it, you have to understand and look through the lens of who the person was talking to at that particular time in history. You have to look at the culture of the time. Mm -hmm. You have to look at the intent of the author who penned this text for us to read as a look back at what took place back then. Mm -hmm. So when we read the word of God, we have to understand the intent of the context to understand fully what God is trying to convey to us, although it was written thousands of years ago. The interpretation of the text will never lose the accurate interpretation if it's interpreted correctly. Amen. You see, what has happened today is that there's a false doctrine and a false gospel and a lot of preachers, not all, but a segment of them are not interpreting the word of God correctly and they're preaching a false gospel. You see, when we read the word of God, we have to read it the way God intends us to read it and take it in and interpret it. Mm -hmm. So let's break this part down about the cross. Mm -hmm. He says that if any man will follow me, let him deny himself, and watch this, take up his cross. Mm -hmm. At that time, let's use proper hermeneutics, at that time the cross represented something. Mm -hmm. During that time, if you were to see someone carrying a cross, it meant death. Mm. If you were to look out your window, see someone marching by your window carrying a cross, you knew that they were about to die. Mm, my Lord. So when he was talking to his disciples, they understood fully what he was saying when he said this right here in this text. Remember this. Back in those days, criminals, they carried their own crosses to where they were going to be executed at. Mm. So watch this. Jesus was telling his disciples that if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross. They understood what he was saying at that particular time. You see, when we look at Jesus carrying the cross, yes, it represented death, but also to the believer, it represented life. Amen. It, 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 it represented that he was going to die, but it also represented that he was going to live again and we were going to live in him as well. Mm -hmm. So Jesus says, let any man, if they follow me, if they come after me, let them deny themselves and take up his cross. It also meant, watch this, they were going to suffer. Believers sometimes would suffer. I just said when they carried their cross back in the day, it meant they were going to be executed, that they were going to die. They were going to suffer by carrying their cross. <laughs> but yet Jesus says, oh, you, you got to take the cross. <laughs> He said, yeah, yeah, I know what the cross represents, and you need to take it up. <laughs> I, I know what the cross means. I'm going to take up the cross, but I also need for you to take up the cross. Yeah, you are going to suffer by following me. My Lord. You see, we try to make and try to tell others that if you become a Christian, you won't ever suffer 
You won't ever go through anything. No one's never going to talk about you. You won't never get short of money. Uh, people are not going to hate on you. Everything will be fine. The red carpet is going to be rolled out for you each and every day. You're going to wake up in the morning. The sun is going to be glistening on your face. You're going to be walking on air. You can walk on water. We want to tell others that that's the way it's going to be. When we know that's not how it's going to be. As a, as a matter of fact, if you're not going through anything right now, you may want to check yourself. <laughs> because if, if, if you're following Christ, you will go through some things. Yeah. Because the enemy is going to come at you. He's going to throw everything at you, including the kitchen sink, the refrigerator, the stove. He's, he's going to throw everything at you if you follow Christ. Think of the enemy, Satan, like a jealous boyfriend. <laughs> you know how it go when 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 you leave that boyfriend, you leave that girlfriend. Uh, uh, when they really say they love you, when they really want you back with them, they're going to come at you. You have to take out restraining order on them, <laughs> and and they will throw everything at you to derail your future plans. That's just like the enemy. You see, the enemy is jealous with you <laughs> and the position. That you now have mm -hmm. with God. So when you decide to follow Jesus, he gets upset and he tries to derail your destiny mm -hmm. so that you don't continue to follow Jesus. And you know, this whole Jesus thing is not working out. I'll go right back to the world, go back to drinking, smoking, sleeping, doing all of those type of things because this God thing they said would work for me is not working. Mm -hmm. That's the plan. Mm -hmm. Of the enemy. Jesus. But Jesus said, take up the cross. Mm -hmm. You're going to suffer. You're going to go through some things in this life. Mm -hmm. Watch this. We have to take up our own crosses. Mm -hmm. You can't take up anybody else's cross. Mm -hmm. That's their cross. Mm -hmm. We can't be stealing other folks' crosses. Mm -hmm. We have our own cross mm -hmm. in which... We must bear. Besides, you don't want somebody else's cross anyway. Amen. You don't know what they're going through. Mm -hmm. You may see the glory, but you don't understand the story. You don't, you don't know what they went through to get to where they're at. So don't look at somebody else and say, well, they got a little small cross. He got a medium-sized cross. He got an extra large cross. I don't want his cross. You cannot look at mm -hmm. other people's crosses and try to carry theirs. Carry your own cross. It's enough weight on that cross that will keep you on your knees calling out yes. to God. Carry yes. your own cross. Yes. Hmm. Jesus. Watch this right here. The text, it says, take up his cross. Mm -hmm. hmm. Grace and no one should try to force you to carry the cross. Mm -hmm. hmm. You have to be intentional That's right. about the cross. That's right. Okay. It says, take up his cross. It's intentional. It's a choice. And each day we have is a choice on if we're going to carry the cross mm -hmm. <laughs> or not. In other words, is this the day that I continue to follow Christ? Am I going to lead myself or am I going to be led by someone else? You have to determine what's going to happen each and every day. I'm coming to a close here. Watch this. The next part, it says, follow me. All right. Follow me. Talk about follow Jesus. When I was looking at this, believe it or not, uh, I thought about dancing. Hmm. Um, many of you, unless you've been living under a rock, you have heard of the reality TV series uh, Dancing with the Stars. Hmm. Uh, when you watch that show, uh, you have a professional and you will have an amateur. Uh, the job of the professional dancer is to partner with the amateur dancer and show them 
how to dance. <clears throat> In other words, they are dance partners. Uh, the professional who have been dancing for years have a lot of things to teach to the amateur. The amateur may think they know how to dance. They may think they know how to cut a rug, but leave it up for the professionals. Mm -hmm. uh, the professional will show the amateur how to do different types of dance moves and so forth. Uh, I would show you some, but um, <laughs> this is being recorded and I don't want to be blackmailed later. <laughs> um, but the, the, the professional would partner up with the amateur to teach the amateur how to dance. Now, if the amateur would try to lead the professional, there are going to be some issues. They will be out of rhythm. They may be stepping on each other toes. Um, things may not go as smoothly as they should if the amateur is trying to lead the professional. That's just like us and God. The word says that we are to follow Jesus. We're the amateurs. He's the professional. Uh, he came for us. He's showing us how to stay in the right rhythm. He's trying to show us how to do the right things. But if we try to lead, we may step on his toes. Um, um, and, and if we step on his toes, things are not going to be going as smoothly as it should. He said, no, you need to move this way when I move this way. Because uh, when I move like this, you need to move like that. When I go to the left, you need to go to the right. When I go to the left, you need to go to the right. When I turn, you turn just like that. <laughs> but he said, when, 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 if you allow, allow me to lead, I can be your dance partner on the floor of life. Yeah. I'm the professional. Yeah. You're the amateur. You cannot lead me, although you may try. <laughs> but I ain't following you. Because I know where it's going to end up at. I know more than what you know. Mm -hmm. Just like the professional dancer knows more than the amateur dancer. God knows more than what we know. He's already been there, done that, got a jacket. So God says, if you allow me to partner up with you, and be your dance partner in life, I'm going to take you places you never thought you would ever be. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do things for you never thought would even yeah. take place. Just allow me Amen. to lead you. So in other words, I need for you to follow me, not me follow you. I'm the professional. I'm the expert. I have always been been here. I always will be here. When you leave, I'm still going to be here. I am the professional. You're the amateur. I need for you to follow me. Grace Center, yeah. goodbye. I'm gone. Happy Resurrection Sunday. We need to follow Jesus. Yeah. It's okay to follow him. Yeah. I know what others may say. You can do this and live this type of way and sleep and drink. Do all this stuff. It's best to follow Jesus. Amen. It's okay to follow Jesus. Yes. Matter of fact, let me change my little sermon time. It's better than okay yes. to follow Jesus. It's more yes. than okay yes. to follow Jesus. It's a great thing to follow Jesus. Watch this. Following Jesus has benefits. It has yes. protection. It has healing. It has cover. It has all the things you need in a benefits package when you follow him. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. yes, yes. Grace Center, it is okay mm -hmm. to follow him. Amen. It is okay to allow him mm -hmm. to lead you. Mm -hmm. Don't try to lead the dance. Mm -hmm. Let him lead you. He's the expert. He knows what he's talking about. Yes. When I was in seminary, there was this analogy talking about how God, he, he knows all. Mm -hmm. And I never forgot this analogy of how they described God as sitting up high. And he's watching a parade mm -hmm. take place. Mm -hmm. Now, if we go to a parade, we're at one part of the parade. 
We're either at the back, the middle, the front, somewhere in between. But we can only see mm -hmm. what we see mm -hmm. with our eyes as the parade is strolling by. But with God, he sits so high up that he sees the entire parade go by. Mm -hmm. He sees the back, mm -hmm. the middle, the front, and everything in between. Mm -hmm. That's why it's best mm -hmm. to follow Jesus. Because he sees it all. He sees the entire parade mm -hmm. of your life. Mm -hmm. You're only seeing one segment of the parade in your life. Mm -hmm. And you think that since you only see this right here, it's always going to be like that. So you don't need Jesus. Mm -hmm. But God knows what's up ahead. Mm -hmm. He knows what's about to take place. And he knows what's going to happen in the end if you don't receive his son, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Receive Jesus. It's okay to follow him. God knows all. He sees all. And he sent his son, Jesus Christ, just for you and I. Mm -hmm. Jesus died on the cross so that we didn't have to. He atoned for our sins, took the beating just for us. It doesn't matter what you have done, where you have been. Mm -hmm. He died for our past, present and future sins. Yeah, it's okay to follow him. Mm -hmm. It's okay. It's better than okay. It's more than okay. Mm -hmm. So as I come to a close on this day. And open up the virtual doors of the church. I want to extend the invitation to someone out there. Mm -hmm. On this resurrection Sunday morning. If you don't know Jesus Christ. As your Lord. And your personal Savior, you can receive him on today. It's not complicated. You don't have to jump through a lot of hoops just to receive him. He made it quite simple for us to receive his son. So if you want to receive Jesus Christ, meaning that uh, once you receive him, if you were to die today, that you're going to have a permanent place in heaven for eternity mm -hmm. you can't get evicted they cannot kick you out but you can receive him yeah. and you will be in that place forever if that's you and you want to receive Jesus on today you can say this prayer with me you can say dear God thank you for thinking about me thank you for having me on your mind so on today I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that Jesus came that Jesus died and that he rose on that third day mm -hmm. if you have prayed that prayer there are angels rejoicing in heaven Amen. Luke 15 talks about how that if one person received Jesus there's a celebration mm -hmm. going on in the heavenlies if you have prayed that prayer, we would love to hear from you. Send us a private message, email, however you need to reach out to us. We would love to connect with you. For all others, any other special prayer requests, you can let us know. You can comment in the comment section or email or private message. Many of you have our cell numbers and you sometimes will reach out to me. We would love to stand in the gap with you. Amen. Praise God. All right. It's that point in our service on today where we're going to, uh, it's time of tithes and offering. We have several different ways in which you may give. Um, the easiest thing to do is to go to our website, which is thegracecenterga.org. Uh, click on that give link. It has all all of the ways you can pay, you can give your tithes and offerings and so forth. You can give through the website itself. You can give through our cash app, which is the Grace Center GA. Um, you can download our Givelify app. Or you can send your checks or money orders to our P.O. box that's on that site as well. That's the Grace Center GA.org. 
Well, amen. I pray and hope that this message has blessed you on today. Uh, I hope you have a happy and safe uh, Resurrection Sunday. I know here in Georgia, the sun is out. Uh, we're going to get out late and do some things ourselves. And I just pray that, you know, for the ones who receive Jesus Christ on today, let us know. Connect with us. We'll love uh, uh, to show you. Um, how this thing works as best as we possibly can. And if you don't have a local church or wherever you at, reach out to us. Uh, we'll do our best to connect you with a local church in your area. Amen. All right, let us pray as we are dismissed on today. Oh, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy. We thank you, Lord, for sending your son, Jesus Christ. To, today is the day that we remember what Jesus has done for us on this Resurrection Sunday. He may have died on a Friday, but early Sunday morning he got up. And when he got up, he got up with all power in his hand. And we thank you, Lord, for sending your son, Jesus, just for us. So as we go throughout this week and go throughout today, please be with us, protect us, and cover us. We pray for all the tithes and the offerings that have been given. We pray that you will use it for your glory. Multiply it 100-fold, not only just in this ministry, but back in the lives of your people who gave. For the ones who wanted to give but just didn't have it, Bless them as well. We thank you, Lord, for all you have done. All that you're doing in our lives and everything that you are about to do. We give you all praise, honor, and glory. Yes. It is in Jesus Christ's name that we do pray. Amen. All right, everyone. Have a blessed Resurrection Sunday. Have a blessed week. Until next Sunday, I love you. Be blessed.